In this video, I'd like to talk about the paper called An Image is Worth Half Tokens After Layer 2 that they show in large vision language models, half of the tokens are kinda redundant, so we can compress the flops of a 13 billion parameter model to achieve a lower budget that of a 7 billion parameter model, while still maintaining superior performance. And more specifically, they show in this figure that on x-axis if we have theoretical flops reduction ratio and on y-axis average performance, then if we reduce the flops by a ratio of almost 50%, then we have the same accuracy. So let's just see how this works. So initially, they just like to give you some preliminary knowledge of how classic network architecture of LVLM is. And they say we have four different types of tokens. We have image tokens coming from the output of some encoder, which encodes the features from an image. We have some instruction tokens, which are coming from the user asking some questions. We have some system prompt tokens, which they already exist in large language models as a, some general message to control the behavior of LLMs. And we have some output tokens. And having all these system prompts, image and instruction tokens as the input, we can construct the first token of the output. Then we can have this first output token as, as additional input and having all these tokens up to the first output token, we can construct the second token. And then we add the second token to the input and in autoregressive manner, we go so on and so forth. And inside LLMs, we have some stack of transformable layers, each receiving a set of tokens and outputting a set of tokens. And for a specific transformable layer, let's just say transformable layer J, it receives a set of tokens coming from the transformable layer J minus one, and it constructs tokens for layer J. And for these tokens at layer J, we are interested in one specific token, let's just say token I. And for this token I at layer J, we compute four different attention scores, which they should sum to one. The first attention score is for system prompt token. That says, how much should we attend to system prompt tokens in previous layers to construct this specific token? And similarly, how much should we attend to image tokens in previous layers to construct this token? And similarly for instruction token and output token, and they should sum to one. And once we computed this attention scores, we can compute something called attention allocation, which says for a specific layer, let's just say layer J, the amount of attention we allocate for system prompt token, for example, is sum of the attention score for all the tokens that we have in that specific layer. Meaning that if I want to construct all the tokens at layer J, how much should I attend to system prompt tokens in previous layers to construct that? And the final thing to compute is attention efficiency, which normalizes the attention allocation by dividing it by the number of tokens in the specific category. So for example, for image tokens, the numerator is the attention allocation and the denominator is the number of image tokens that we have. And we need to compute this attention efficiency because for example, for image tokens, we have a lot of tokens, but for system prompt tokens, we have a few of them. So by dividing it, we kind of normalize them. So after computing these things, we can come up with some analysis that we can see from this figure that in this specific example, we have 35 tokens for system prompts but for image tokens, we have 576. So we have a lot more image tokens compared to system prompt tokens. And the other thing to know is that shallow layer means layer one and two, and deep layer means all the other layers. And we are having a transformer layer here with 32 layers. And looking at the attention allocation, we see that for layer one and two, if I want to construct those tokens, I have to attend a lot to the output tokens, while I attend a little bit to the system prompt tokens. But more interestingly, after layer two, I have a lot of attention allocation coming from the system prompt tokens, while a few of them are coming from instruction tokens and image tokens. And more interestingly, if you look at the attention efficiency, 
we see that image tokens have the least attention efficiency. But why is that? For example, if you look at the shallow layers, we see that attention allocation of image token is more than user instruction tokens. But the image tokens, we have 576 of them. And for user instructions, we have 135 of them. So if I divide this 0 0.24 by 576, but divide this 0 0.16 by 135, I see that actually I have three times more attention efficiency for user instruction tokens compared to image tokens. So knowing the fact that in all cases, image tokens are having the least attention efficiency, the authors came up with some idea of pruning these image tokens to reduce the flops while maintaining the performance. And they proposed something called fast V. And in fast V, we have some visual information. It could be an image or a video. And then the user asks a question like, what is funny about this video? And like other works, we're using an encoder, let's just say clip VIT, and construct some output tokens from these images. In this case, 2048 image tokens. And they are going into a large language model, in this case, video lava. But in case if you have an image, we have lava. But in addition to that, we are having fast V module, which is a plug and play module that we need to only add it at inference time. And the way that this module works is super simple. We have a stack of transformer layers and we pick one of them, let's just say transformer block at layer K, and then we add this fast V re-rank and filtering module, which filters out R percent of the image tokens. So we have a couple image tokens as we can see here, but the yellow ones are the ones that we filtered them out. And from the next layer, so on, we do not have those tokens. So we have less tokens and less computation and resulting a faster model at inference time. But how should we filter them out? We do it based on those attention scores alpha that I just mentioned, that we compute them for each tokens. So we have some score that says how much each of these tokens are attending to the previous tokens. And if they do not attend a lot, meaning that they are not very important, so I can select like 50% of them and filter them, them out. And looking at the result, we see that if we do not apply this thing, no fast V, and utilize 100% of the flops, we have the result of the video lava without any modifications. But if we select layer two, and we filter out 50% of the image tokens, then we reduce the flops by a ratio of 52%, while the output answer of the model is exactly the same. And similarly, if I select layer 5 and reduce the image tokens by a ratio of 75%, meaning that the flops reduces to 38% of the original flops, even in that case, I'm coming up with the same answer. But if I select layer 2 and reduce it by 75%, I see that the flops reduces a lot, but it affects the output. And yeah, that's the whole idea behind FastV, as simple as that. So let's just see a couple of results. In table one, we can see that they compared Lava version 1.5, 7 billion and 13 billion, and also this QuenVL chat 7 billion models on different benchmarks. We have no caps and Flickr 30k for image captioning, AOK VQA for video question answering, and MMU for multimodal reasoning. And for each case, we see that the baseline is for the original model performance, and the highest scores are mentioning with the red color, and second highest are in blue. And as we can see, for the Lavo version 1.5 7 billion, if I select, let's just say, layer 3, and reduce the tokens by a ratio of 50%, on average, I get the exact same performance of the original model. And what is even more interesting is that I can do it even at layer zero, meaning that for the input tokens. But for input tokens, I don't really have any attentions from previous layers. So how can I decide that? 
they say we don't do it based on the attention scores and we just randomly drop the image tokens. So they randomly dropped 50% of the image tokens and they got 69 as the score for the average case. And what is kind of wake here is that this no caps, which results 100.9, it is more than the rest, but they didn't highlight it. Maybe they missed it or they had some typo error, I don't know. But this is what it is. For the Lava version 1.5, 30 million, I can again select a layer, let's just say layer two, and then I reduce by flops of 50% and I get the exact same average score of 73.6. And then we have this table which also mentions the latency per, per example and the amount of GPU memory we need. So they selected the first layer, so randomly dropped 50%. And we can see that for Lava 30 billion, the latency drops to be almost equal, a bit faster than 7 billion, while the score is still better. And this evaluation study says, what happens if I do not do it only at inference time? What happens if I have it at training time? So at training time, they randomly dropped 50%. We see that the score always decreases compared to the original one that uses 100% of the image tokens. But if at inference time I select layer 2 and drop by 50%, I'm getting better result. So yes, if I do it at training time, I have less training time. But if I'm not worried about that, then I can just add it at inference time and I get a better performance. And they also did the random dropping a layer two without this attention ranking thing. So we see that if we just randomly drop it, even in that case, I can see some good results, but it is not as good as the ranking result. And the other thing that they also tried is that try to mess with system prompt tokens and instruction tokens. And we see that in all cases, the performance drops significantly. So don't try to mess with them and only image tokens because those are the ones that they have the least attention efficiency. And the final thing is this streaming LLM, which just does some attention optimization for the large language models. They wanted to apply it for the image tokens, but interestingly, we see that uh, performance drops significantly. It becomes the worst. So they conclude image tokens and text tokens they are having different behavior and further investigation is needed to better understand what is the difference. And the final thing I'd like to talk about is this figure. If you look at the figure on the left and let's select like layer 20 and prune 87.5% of the tokens, then looking at the performance, we see no difference. But if I select layer one, for example, and prune 87.5%, I see a significant reduction in the performance. So if I prune on the deep layers, it is more likely to see no difference. And looking at the figure on the right, I see that even selecting layer 20, if I prune 87.5% of the tokens, I have another 12 layers after it. So another 12 layers see only 12.5% of the input. So I have a flops reduction ratio up to around 40%, which is kind of cool. And yeah, that's all the thing I wanted you to know about this paper. If you have enjoyed watching this, don't forget to like and subscribe. And until the next video, goodbye.